but we are ready to rock and roll. We are ready to make chopped cheese. Let's do it. Okay, you Let's ready? Do it. Yes, please. Okay. Let's go back to the overhead. There we go. Now let's talk about what you're gonna need to make this sandwich, okay? Chopped cheese sandwich. We're gonna need some onion and some tomato, which we have right here. We are going to be using uh, some beautiful ground beef here. Allow me to take this top. This is some really nice grass fed. Look at that beautiful color on that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And we're using uh, 8515. Uh, Fat, qua uh, fat quantity on that today, so a little bit on the leaner side. Uh, not completely lean, it's not a 90-10, but an 85-15 we're using. Of course, you're going to need a bunch of shredded cheese. It's a chopped cheese sandwich, after all. We've got some shredded lettuce that we're going to use as a topper, as well as right here. Da -da -da -da. Our own little play on it. Bread choice is important, so we're using some lovely pretzel buns there. And then uh, we're going to be using right here our high white and handsome steak sauce right there. We're going to be using that. And then a secret weapon. Yes, I know I'm a fan of it as well. Uh, right here, also our last best barbecue rub in seasoning. It's a lot. And you're going to need a pat of butter, but we'll talk more about that later. So that runs all the ingredients that we're going to be needing here. Let's go ahead, get some heat on the pans, and get ready, bang, bang, Energizer Bunny style, uh, to start cooking, all right? So we're going to go ahead and get some heat on the pans here. Two pans rocking back on the stove, and we are ready to rock and roll. Flip that back over. Uh, yeah, our last best has been uh, quite the ingredient for people uh, making meatballs, burgers, any sort of sloppy joes, chili. Any of those, it really livens it up. But first things first, we got to get our good friend onion going, okay? So we are going to, let's actually, I'm going to mix it up tonight. So using my vegetable cleaver, I'm going to use my chef's knife. And we're going to get a beautiful yellow onion here on the cutting board. And let's go ahead. And for just the two of us, uh, we're going to probably just need half an onion. So we're going to go ahead and slice that down just like so and save that for another day another recipe another layer of deliciousness we're going to get that top end off the onion there leaving the root end intact of course and what we want to do is we want to dice this down now the chopped cheese right uh is one of those regional dishes you could be watching from anywhere on the world and you may not know what a chopped cheese is don't feel bad a lot of people don't because it's a regional dish all right and it was made famous in new york specifically the borough of harlem okay that's where it originated from there's there it's one of those things kind of like uh the caesar salad and stuff like where did it actually come from was it in the middle east and you know and all this different stuff but it's widely renowned as a new york type of sandwich okay it's often referred to as a combination okay <laughs> you ready for this of a philly cheesesteak of a sloppy joe and what's the other one Philly, you say sloppy Joe and uh, a cheeseburger? and a cheeseburger. Yeah, I don't... that'll work. But it's basically like a mishmash of all those coming together. So let's go ahead and dice our onion here. So we're going to go ahead and slice this uh, very thin, quick cook time on this. We are going to get these onions broken down and come across the top that I'm glad I chose this knife doing a little bit more delicate onion work here today. Just like so, get that last one. We'll turn that 90 degrees. Let's flip that over to the overhead cam there. And let's go ahead and dice this down as well. I'm going to keep that outside shut there and just let the knife do the work. We're going to get some very nice thin dices, okay? Off to the races. Now, this is very simple recipe, but man, oh, man. The amount of flavor that is going to be in this thing is out of this world. And that's going to come from two different things. The order of ingredients, how we do these, and also Montana Max barbecue products. If you do this, <laughs> I, I kind of laugh because this is a Montana Max doing a New York recipe. And it kind of reminds me of like those old El Paso salt. New York City, <laughs> you know, uh, those old salsa yeah. commercials. Maybe dating myself. I haven't seen one of those in, in eons. But if you know, then you know. Probably the, back from the 90s or something. I haven't seen that. Before. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking early 90s. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so there we go. We got some beautiful diced onion ready to rock and roll here. Let's take it over to the stove. Let's go ahead and get a little olive oil in that pan, shall we? Should have enough here to make it work. Gotta have to get a little refill there. We just need enough to coat here, so I'm gonna use what I got left in here. You can use butter as well, and if I, I feel the need for a little bit more oil, I'll just toss a little extra butter in there. Either way, right? Yeah, or I can refill it if you want. No big I'm deal, gonna... no big deal. We got, should be plenty in there. That's already warming up. You'll notice how quickly it's it moves, right? Even oil uh, likes to hold together. Uh, that's what molecules like to do. They like to stick together. Uh, so when we apply heat, it loosens those bonds a little bit, and we can get a nice coating there. And let's go ahead. We got a little sizzle going. We got a little sizzle going. It'll heat up pretty quick. Jesse James says, Max bragging about his product. I like it. That a, Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And just, just because you segued me so nicely, Nicely there, Jesse James. We're going to build our base layer flavor with our Mountain Magic on our onions here. We build layers of flavor by building different seasonings on our different ingredients. And I don't get too carried away because we don't want this to be a seasoning sandwich. No, we want to just season our ingredients, right? And get those rocking and rolling. Okay, and let's go ahead and start breaking those onions down. Uh, also, cutting them down, dicing them down nice and thin. That's going to make the cook time relatively quick on here. And you know what? Real quickly, let's take it back to the main camera and hop over to the fridge of doom. Ah, fridge of doom. Let's get uh, let's get a little butter in the pan there, just a little bit. By the way, if you haven't followed us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that, like I said, there's links right below the video there, and that's what that wolf signifies by joining us here, or just throwing us a follow here on Kitsch. You become a member of the pack, like Jesse James is. Long time pack member, right? That's right. Be because food brings us all together. We're stronger together. And we all have an open invitation. You can join our community and become part of our pack here. We absolutely love that, don't we, dear? Yes. The more the merrier. More the merrier, indeed. All right. I'm going to get that butter melted down in there, get these onions cooking. And we're already getting aromatics coming up here from the onions mm -hmm. and seasonings working together. Okay. Loving it. There we go. All right. So we got our onions working. This is going to probably take roughly three to four minutes to get these uh, cooked through the way we need them to be. We want them just, you know, glistening, starting to uh, become translucent. And that'll be absolutely wonderful. Back over to the cutting board. Let's go with the big camera and really show off that beautiful ground beef here. Now, Quality of ingredients is an important thing here. So uh, if you buy fresh ground beef from your grocery store, you will notice the difference, right? It's really not that much pricier than uh, getting it if it's in a pre-wrapped. Uh, chub is the actual term that they use for those when they come in the, the plastic vacuum mm -hmm. sealed uh, deal. If you can get these from your butcher, at most most butchers, even in grocery stores, are grinding their uh their meat fresh every day mm -hmm. so if you can do that it's gonna up your flavor game just with that simple tip right just with that simple tip let's go ahead and get some seasoning in here and once again we're using our last best okay it's on the sweeter side of the spectrum which is why it works really excellent with ground beef okay jesse james has a question yeah lay it on me how do you know whether to use butter or olive oil uh it you can they're really interchangeable uh, olive oil yeah. is going to have less fat in it. Butter has a high percentage of fat in it. Mm -hmm. So if you're being a little bit more health conscious, uh, olive oil is the way to go. Uh, but really, you can use them interchangeably. For, mo for Is a general rule of thumb. Right now, mm -hmm. some chefs like, no, you can't. <laughs> for, for general cooking. Yeah. You're, okay. you're pretty okay. No, I can't believe he said that. I did. I did. You're going to be just fine. Okay. Uh, butter will uh, inherently have a little bit more flavor because it is based out of animal fat. Uh, but, you know, olive oil works nicely too. Okay. Yeah. But except high heat cooking, you don't want to use olive oil for high heat cooking and then butter can burn. Can burn. So you got to be careful with both. And olive oil will smoke and burn as well. Okay. Yeah. So you want to be careful on, on both those if you're cooking with high heat. We're cooking with a medium heat here uh, it, with our onions and our ground beef and everything that we've got going on, okay? 
So I've got some seasoning here. We're going to add a little bit more and just because uh, to make it easy on ourselves. We'll use Jen's favorite meat smashy tool, okay? The chopper. The chopper. That's what I call it. Get in the chopper. I don't know what it's really called. Onions starting to glisten, starting to look real good. So now, if they've gotten broken down, they've been cooking for about four minutes or so. We're doing good. We're releasing aromatics there. Let's go ahead and we add our ground beef with seasoning. I've got a little bit there. We'll add a little bit more. But we can go ahead and mix that right in the pan as well, okay? There we go. We got a nice sizzle going. Absolutely beautiful. Great color. Breaks up real nicely. Look at that. Now, the uh, the more pink or red, like this ground beef that you're seeing right here, it is the fresher it is as well, okay? So when ground beef starts to turn brown, it doesn't mean it's spoiled, okay? The, and it's it's very common. But that means it's been sitting there for a day probably or longer. This is nice, fresh. But when it's uncooked and it's starting to turn brown, what the process is happening, right? Let's let's talk science. Is it's just oxidizing. And you'll notice that, right? If you got ground beef and it's kind of brown on the outside and you break it open, it's pink on the inside. That's because the oxygen hasn't worked its way in there yet. But this was, as I showed you right there, I mean, we're looking nice, vibrant red there. Great quality, fresh quality. Uh, makes a difference. Makes a difference, right? Jesse James says, so what you're saying is if you're not clogging your veins, you're doing it wrong. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we were if we were calling it Southern, co Southern cooking, right? <laughs> you, you wouldn't be too far off, right? There's always butter in everything like that. It's like, you want to make pecan pie? You're going to need four sticks of butter and some pecans. Yeah. I kid, of course. All right. We got a little more seasoning in there. And we are going to go ahead and make sure this ground beef uh, in these onions are evenly distributed. And we start working these layers of flavors together. Together. All right. We got our other pan going here which is absolutely nice, okay? So in the other pan, I'm gonna take our pat of butter that we've got pre-portioned out there, just a little just a little bit to uh, go ahead and get that bottom, oh yeah. I forgot to tell you to switch cameras. It's all right. Okay. It's all right, they know what I'm doing. We're gonna have to get you some buttons over there. Yeah, that'd be nice. For emergency camera switching. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, we got that going. Already got some color change going on there. Cooking away, onions cooking, two different seasonings. There we go. Looking good. Other Smells pan. Smells good too. Smells good, looking good. Here we go. Little pat of butter into the other pan. That should be all warmed up nice there. So let's go ahead and get that in. Sizzle, sizzle. That's what I like to hear. Let's go ahead and get that butter. Starting to work down. I got forgot to turn the fan on. We want to get that fan going there. Butter smoking a little bit. Going to go ahead and take it up off the heat. For anyone new that's joining us, he's doing a bodega style chopped cheese. That's right, chopped cheese of New York fame. Harlem claims it. All right, Harlem is the home of the chopped cheese, and uh, the reason they call it chopped cheese is because the other main ingredient it's almost well, it is. It's it's more parts cheese than beef. <laughs> it's we've got roughly about eight ounces of beef cooking with half an onion right now in there. And we've got 10 ounces of cheese, which equates to about 10 tablespoons of cheese. Okay. <laughs> uh, just so, I mean, that's what it is. It's And that's just for two sandwiches. That's just for two sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. So uh, double this recipe for a family of four. Yeah. All right. So we got some butter in the pan here, uh, melted down. And I'm just going to take our beautiful pretzel buns. Uh, and I don't know how well you'll see this. So I don't have quite that wide an angle. You should be able to see it a little bit. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and toast those up in there, pressing those down, making sure they get nice and flat in the pan there. That should just take a moment. Okay. Let's go ahead. Now here's where it gets fun. So the chopped cheese is also, depending on where you eat it, even in New York City, right? Even in New York City, they're all going to have slight variations on what they put on them. Some are just meat and cheese in bread. That's it, chopped cheese. 
right? Other ones get fancier, okay? Other ones add different condiments, different flavors, all ways to make it their own. I, it reminds me of when I lived in uh, Minnesota for a while, and it's like every, everywhere had different Juicy Lucy's. And they all had slightly different variations on them, right? So they're like, ah, this is the Juicy Lucy. No, mine's the Juicy Lucy. Well, they're, they're all good. They're just all a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our high, white, and handsome steak sauce. We have a question here. Lay it on me. You kind of uh, answered, but it's from Cat Swan. Cat Swan, welcome. Hello. It's good to see you. Cat Swan says, what is bodega style? So bodega style uh, in New York. Bodega is roughly uh, is roughly means just kind of like a neighborhood corner store, and you know it's like your name in all these little neighborhoods around. That's what they call their little corner markets, right? It's just that's the name for it. It's bodega. So that in these bodegas, not only is I'm going to keep stirring this as I talk to you. Do I have that in the right camera? Nope, I got it. So uh, all these little uh, different stores, right? They sell, you know. Kind of, kind of like a quickie mark kind of style thing. Uh, and I, oh, that sauce, awesome. It smells so good. But in order to, you know, make their money and do their thing, and we got a nice toast going on there. That's nice, hot, toasty. Let's go ahead and get the other one in there real quick. They'll often serve like kind of deli style food, you know, like if you go into a grocery store and they're selling fried chicken and potato wedges and different stuff like that. They'll have different stuff. And this is a quick, easy thing that they, they'll have a blacktop griddle in there. And you can go in and be like, hey, because that's what New Yorkers sound like, right? They're like, hey, I'm know. a New Yorker. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's a quick, easy thing that they can sell uh, is a hot sandwich in the neighborhood market. And you had explained earlier um, that it was kind of a cross between like a Philly cheesesteak and a sloppy joe and a cheese per cheeseburger. Yeah, it's kind of taking those influences from all over, but it's something that they can have going, keep warm, you know, top off. And we're going to serve this up bodega style too today. So this is going to be awesome, right? Jesse uh, James says, thank you for not being cheap with the cheese this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a long, I had a long time. talk with Kansas City Jen yeah. right there on the chef's table. I was like, today, chopped True. cheese. So it, it has more cheese than it does beef. That's why it's not like considered a chopped beef sandwich or a Philly cheesesteak, which would have more meat in it. Uh, but it's, that's why it's called a chopped cheese sandwich, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to actually flip this over to the big screen now. There we go. We got buns toasting. And we are going to drop in this cheese. Now, we don't just dump the whole thing in there. We add a little bit at a time, all right? And start melting that down. Let's go ahead and check our buns here. There's not too much oil in that pan, huh? No, it's fine. We got a nice toast. We got a little soak on the edge, but that's bodega style. We're rocking and rolling. Okay. And we're melting that down. Look at that. Cat Swan says, thank you for the clarification. Sounds like I need to visit a bodega if I ever get to New York. Looks delish. Yeah, and get, get yourself a real authentic chopped cheese, right? That's that's on my bucket list for sure, you know? And it's those, yeah. it's those little neighborhood spots that you go into that always got the best stuff, you know? It's the, those cats that are making it day in, day out for years on end, got their family secrets and all that uh, in there. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, right? It's like, is there any better place to get a Philly cheesesteak than probably Philly? Probably not. You know, that's the home of it. You can get a Juicy Lucy on a menu anywhere. Are you going to have the Minnesota Juicy? You know, it's that regional stuff that you just can't replicate because it's part of uh, it's part of a culture. It's not just a food, right? It's these people's uh, cultures that come into play and know-how and style and everything mm -hmm. that make it really special, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, we're all, we're coming together here. This is looking good. It's got a nice consistency. Just a little bit more cheese to add in. Do I still have it? Yes, I do on the stove cam. Absolutely wonderful. There we go. Finish off that cheese there. You can see it sticking together. Yeah. It's all cheesy. Let's take it back real <laughs> quick. Let's take it back. This is what, look at that. Look at that texture, right? That is 
freaking cheesy, as the kids say. Look at that. That is super cheesy. So we got beautiful sautéed onion, fresh ground beef, both different seasonings. We used our Mountain Magic to start, uh, and our last best right there. Look at it. So that's got that sloppy Joe, but not so sloppy, okay? All right, we're looking good there. Now I'm actually going to turn the heat off here. We've got that mixed even distribution all the way through, and I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little shake there to, to level it out. We're going to let that cool for just a minute because that will help that cheese firm up just for a moment there. We've got our pretzel buns toasted here. We've got some shredded lettuce that we're going to add. Always a big advocate of adding a little bit of something fresh to a hot dish. Mm -hmm. You get different texture, you get different temperatures, that all creates awesome mouthfeel, which makes it interesting, okay? So the other fresh item, of course, we're gonna add here. Let's take it back to the overhead. One is the loneliest tomato that I ever knew. We're gonna get some nice tomato slices on here as well, okay? Like I said, depending on where you go in New York, what what market you go into, I mean, they're all going to be slightly different. If you if you ever get that chance to go in there and do that, and you're like, that's not how Montana Max made it on Kitsch. Well, yeah, they're all going to be a little bit different. Nice thick slice of tomato on there. There we go. Let's go ahead and get a trivet out. Let's make some Sammies. I cannot wait for garden season coming up where we can have fresh tomatoes from our oh, garden. Oh, I know. I know. We're almost there, babe. We're almost there. Chop it cheese, chop it, chop it cheese, bubbling away. Okay. And in order to make this and give us that real bodega vibe, I'd almost call it bodega delicious. I'm going to serve this up just like you would at the state fair. We're going to wrap these in foil so you can take it on the go. You got to catch the subway to make it to work on time. You got to rock and roll. We're going to make some beautiful handheld sandwich here. There we go. Nice and toasty bun. Jesse James is asking, are you using lean beef? This is an 8515. Okay. So it's on the leaner side of things. It's on the leaner, leaner side of things. Okay. Uh, I'd recommend that for this kind of dish for sure. You could go 90. 90 10. Absolutely. It should be a little leaner than that. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead. So it's like I said, it's got that cheesesteak vibe. Okay. As far as flavors. It's got that sloppy Joe mix. Getting excited. And see, but it's not so sloppy. Look, it's holding on there. I'm tipping it. Looks good. And it's holding together, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're going to, oh, we're right there. Right there. Look at that. <laughs> Smelling good, looking good, feeling good. It's all good. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put, look at that beautiful tomato right on top there. The lettuce is going to be sloppier than the than the sandwich is right there. Top it off with a beautiful pretzel bun. Let's go ahead and get our foil here. Put that right in. Let's tuck it around. Just like that. And you got right there in your hands. Piping hot, kids. Tie ready to catch the subway. Look at that. Chopped cheese sandwich. Let's go ahead and click that side cam. <laughs> Lock. Da -dum. Da -dum. That's great. Da -dum. Da -dum. Delicioso. Oh, that, look, we got onions fall. We got onions dripping off there. Oh, all sorts of flavor. Kansas City Jen. Oh, boy. I'm going to get you. You want me to taste? I, of course. You know you always get first taste here. Come on. Oh, Come boy. on. She turns off the chef cam. She's on her way. I'm going to get you. This is this is going to be chopped messy. cheese. I'm going to get you a big old right there paper towel. Need a bib or something? Hey, <laughs> it's New York style. Rock and roll. There All she right. is, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this is going to be a handful. That's what it's supposed to be. That looks oh so cheesy. That looks great. And I've got a puppy right under pup. my feet. There you go. Now you can, now you can belly <laughs> up to the counter. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. That is very delicious. You got it upside down there. That's you're, okay. You're well, embarrassing me. Yes. Oh. You're embarrassing me. 
But all that I, time, and you, I just don't want it to all fall out. You'll this be all right. is perfect having it wrapped like that. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing, you know, you do with a a, a hero from the state fair or mm. anything like that. Helps mm. keep it warm on the go. Bingo, bango. Oh, so good. I'm gonna just take that little bet around. Oh, you're gonna nope. lick it up. I got it. Mm. Let me in here. Ah. That is, oh, yummy. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, am I a mess? Oh, we're both a mess. <laughs> but it's Friday night and we're feeling right. That's it. That's how easy. Make this oh, New York delicacy, right? Uh, fr from the comfort of your own home. Showtime, 33 minutes. You can easily wow. whip this up in probably 15 mm. minutes, right? Oh, well, yeah. Seeing that consistency close up, it is like so cheesy. It's awesome. Hey, that's <laughs> I that, can speak, eat that with a spoon. Speaking of old commercials, <laughs> if mama wants to please me, she's only got to cheese me. That's old Kraft macaroni one. Oh, nice. <laughs> Same time frame. All right, enough about talking <laughs> how old we are. We've got chopped cheese sandwiches to eat, and hopefully mm. you take it and put your own spin on it. Thank you so much for joining us here on Friday night on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Remember, if you haven't checked us out on Facebook or Instagram, We've got links right below the video, as well as a link. Mm. If you want to do it up with our sauce and seasoning, we used our high white and handsome steak sauce to flavor up that burger. Uh, our ketchup, our kicking mm. ketchup would also be fabulous yeah, that in that. And yeah. our uh, last best seasoning, as well as our mountain magic, building layers of flavor. It's that easy, and you can up your flavor game at home as well. So we'll be back tomorrow, tomorrow. with another at fun. noon. Yeah, Central with another. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. And make sure to save your spot so you don't miss a delicious moment here on Kitsch.com. I am Montana Max. This is Kansas City Jen. And as always, for those about to cook, we salute you. We sure do. Have a great night, everybody. Night. Bye. Bye.